I want to present you today the new two years 1010 data in lung and complex lesion management. These are my disclosures. So the definition of lung and complex lesions in terms of length, there is no discussion. If we are looking at the task classification, we notice lesions longer than 15 centimeters. Complexity is a little bit more difficult to define. We are speaking especially about calcium, about the heterogeneity of lesions, the multi-level aspects and the comorbidities of our patients. But nevertheless, in the study of SOGA, it is very clear that especially lesion length more than 15 centimeters is um, contributing in an important way to the risk score for the loss of primary uh, patency. And so we need to get a durable treatment in these difficult and complex long lesions. And in my opinion, this is based on three pillars. We need to do a good vessel prep. We need to do an efficient drug elution. And we need to scaffold with a modern generation of stents. And if we are looking at the portfolio of iVascular, we find very, two very nice products over there that are responding to this uh, uh, potential um, treatment. First of all, we have the Luminar drug-coated balloon, an innovative uh, uh, bal drug-coated balloon with the last generation of nanotechnology uh, creating a uniform and durable coating with a three microgram per square millimeter Paclitax cell illusion. Uh, the safety and the efficacy is proven of this balloon in several trials. The FPAC trial, of course, as number one, but also in the Merlion trial and the Luminor registry. Beside this, we have also the iVolution stand. The iVolution stand, the modern generation of stand, with now a modern version, the iVolution Pro, with an even more ergonom ergonomic handle and a three-axial sheet deployment system in order to increase ergonomy and precise stand placement. And so the question is, in complex lesions, is one and one three? Well, to figure this out, we started the TANTAN trial, a physician-initiated trial to investigate the safety and efficacy of this combination in task C and D lesions. According to the name TANTAN trial, 100 patients were enrolled in nine Belgian centers. And here you see the timeline of the study with primary endpoints, freedom from clinical driven TLR at one year. But today I want to present you the uh, two years results in terms of freedom from TLR, serious adverse events and survival rates. Very shortly in an exclusion criteria, most important thing, Rutherford two to five patients are allowed with lesions longer than 50 centimeters. Patient demographics, as we can notice over here, 72% of the patients were claudicans, but 28% CLIs, with 26 of them were real Rutherford 5 patients. Here, extremely important lesion length, 24.3 centimeter uh, lesions were treated uh, in and occlusions in 60% of the cases. Uh, procedural characteristics, unfortunately, only an 88%, I want to see 100% there, uh, pre-dilatation or vessel prep was performed, 58% uh, Luminor 18s were used, and as you can see, the DCTs were slightly undersized according to the vessel reference diameter, and the evolution stand was slightly oversized, 10, sized 10 to 15%. Primary patency, as I presented last year, 19.5% uh, after one year. And to, today, I want to present you the two-year results. Freedom from TLR at two years, 89.4%. In these long and complex lesions, amazing results, in my opinion. A little bit uh, surprising and disappointing in, for me was the survival rate at two years, 81.6%. Because of this, we looked very carefully to all the causes of that. Uh, first of all, my first idea was that it was related towards the pandemic COVID-19 situation, but none of the patients died because of this. Uh, secondly, of course, I needed to think on the uh, Paclitaxel issue, the safety of Paclitaxel, but again, we looked very carefully to this and there was no causal relationship uh, in terms of device or procedure-related deaths. So um, all the, the, the reason that I can make 
is the fact that we are really talking about a very diseased population, 30% CLTI patients with extremely long lesions, a lot of occlusion, so very sick cardiovascular patients. So in terms of safety outcomes at two years, we noticed that there were, like I discussed already, 17 deaths. Uh, there are nine clinical-driven TLR, so only four more in the second year. Uh, no amputation, major amputation, and no extra uh, thrombosis. If we are looking at the clinical assessment at two years, you see that we have a sustained res result, a sustained shift from Rutherford 3, 4, and 5, words zero and one. If we are benchmarking with other studies, and I know that results from different trials are not directly comparable, but just because of educational purposes, you see that with this combination, drug-coated balloon, bare metal stand, we are completely in line with the drug eluting stands and doing slightly better than DCD plus or minus bailout stenting. And especially the Tintin results, almost 90% are extremely good. So in summary, I can say that long lesion length is probably the most important restenotic risk factor, although there are more influencing predictors. The combination of vessel prep, drug illusion, and scaffolding is the key to success in real-life lesion treatment. The Belgian 1010 trial using the combination of Luminor and Ivolution stand shows impressive 12 and 24 months results in lesions of 24 centimeter, 60% CTO, and 28% of CLTI patients, a primary patency of 90% at one year, and a freedom from TLR of 90% at two years. The relatively high mortality seems to be related to the very diseased cardiovascular population. Benchmarking of this combination shows slightly better results than DCB and bailout stenting, and at least equivalent results with the modern drug eluting standing. I thank you for your attention.